A giant blob of seaweed, twice the width of the continental U.S., is heading for the shores of Florida as well as other coastlines, threatening to dump smelly and possibly harmful piles across beaches and then causing a problem for the tourism industry. Sargasm, the specific variety of seaweed, has long formed large blooms in the Atlantic Ocean, and scientists have been tracking massive accumulations since 2011. But this year's bloom could be the largest ever. Joining us this morning to break this down and what the future is, J.P. Brooker, the director of Florida Conservation Programs at the Ocean Conservancy, is joining us. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about this. It, it made its rounds on the Internet, but now the big question is, when are we going to start to see the sargasm accumulate right here on Florida's beaches, J.P.? Well, we're going to start seeing it uh, accumulate as soon as this week, I would say. Um, and, you know, this is the result of almost a decade's worth of excessive sargassum production in the northern Atlantic. Um, and that's really attributable to increased wa water temperatures, um, which are uh, fueled by uh, longer growing seasons and um, changes in currents, creating nutrients that flow up and cause that sargassum to bloom in profusion. So, um, you know, we've been expecting this for some time and it's starting to come home to roost. Yeah. So JP did some research on your organization and you're saying that, that climate change is playing a role. As you said, the warmer temperature makes it more conducive for, for this stuff to grow. That's right. Just like any other plant, um, sargassum is going to thrive with warming temperatures. But sargassum is also going to thrive because of excessive nutrients being put into the ocean. And there are human-borne sources of, of nutrients like nitrogen that are flowing in excess into the ocean from all kinds of land-borne um, sources from Florida down to South America. And that, that excessive nitrogen, that excessive phosphorus, it's like putting fertilizer on your lawn. Um, but you're putting the fertilizer right onto the sargassum and it's it's really growing in profusion because of that excessive nutrient input. And let's face it, tourism can suffer here. People are not going to want to go to a beach that looks like this, especially when it smells. And then we've got wildlife concerns as well. What are the expected impacts there? Obviously, so many of us have ties to our coast. A lot of us uh, have financial interest there with the tourism industry. Well, no doubt. And the sargassum is going to blanket the beaches. And fortunately for us, that's something we can pick up. But if we don't pick it up, that sargassum will rot. It will smell. It will have impacts on uh, wildlife from fisheries, which, you know, will suffer because of hypoxic conditions, a lack of oxygen created as that seaweed rots. Um, sea turtles can be impacted by um, their nesting sites being covered up by the sargassum. Um, so there are lots of negative impacts. One thing to note though, sargassum is natural and it is a natural habitat for spawning fish. Mahi-mahi, for example, thrive on sargassum. Many fishermen can tell you that when you find a weed line of sargassum, cast it out and you're gonna catch mahi. So, I mean, there are some silver linings to this sargassum blob, but um, certainly there are things we Floridians need to keep in mind to protect our economy and to protect our ecology. And finally, really quickly, if you can tell us, I know your organization is pushing on lawmakers to take some steps to address the issues now and in the future. That's right. What Florida really needs is comprehensive water quality reforms that prevent those nitrogen sources, those phosphorus sources, those excess nutrients that are created by people from getting into our coastal waterways. That's going to help head off harmful algal blooms like red tide, like blue-green algal events. And it'll also have an impact on big events like the sargassum blob that we're seeing. So we, we, we really need Floridian lawmakers to step up and to remove those, those nutrient sources from our local waterways. Certainly going to be something we're talking about more in the future. JP, thank you for coming on, representing Ocean Conservancy. And of course, you can reach out to them if you have more questions.